I'm Paul Sullins. I'm a solution architect at DocuSign. And I'm here today uh, to talk about uh, a fundamental piece of the CLM platform. That is document generation. Document generation provides the ability for your end users, your teammates to easily create compliant documents that combine inputs from them as users with clauses and templates that are centrally managed within DocuSign CLM. In this video, I'm gonna introduce the three key components that come together to create those documents. Those three components are data, the inputs about the customer, the products, the conversation that's happening inside of that agreement. These data inputs are unique to every agreement that's gonna be generated. Clauses, clauses provide us a modular way to create reusable chunks of language that can be applied dynamically based off of conditions, inputs that the users put in in that data section, or based off of rules or conditions that are in place. Clauses are great because they allow you a way to update information in one place, that clause, that may be used across a wide variety of different agreement templates that you have in place. The third piece is the templates themselves. Templates, which we manage using Microsoft Word, provide the structure, the framework for our finalized agreements. They can contain static language that's included inside of every agreement, uh, as well as things like branding. And, and that's where we control the layout of the final agreement. So now that we've talked about the pieces, let's look a little bit at the administration that goes into it. When our users go to initiate a process to generate a document, they'll typically trigger an action from a menu item here that will lead them to the ability to select from available templates and a form that'll allow them to insert the necessary information to build the appropriate document. Information about the counterparty, about the agreement details, and it's this form that we're gonna look at configuring next. Form configuration is an administrative activity in DocuSign CLM. And those users with the appropriate rights can get access to generate forms like the one we just looked at. Building these forms gives administrators a suite of different data types that they can add with the click of a button to a field, allowing them to do things like add a new date to the form by selecting the field and entering detailed information here. These forms are incredibly important because they give us the opportunity to collect all of the information we need about our counterparties and all the information that's gonna be appropriate for driving the process that the agreement is gonna follow once we've created it. So as you'll see, collecting things like address information is relevant, um, collecting things like the information around our contact and who we're communicating with on the opposite side of this negotiation, as well as details about what's going into the agreement. Details like the amount, key dates, or whether or not we want to include information from clauses as part of this document process. Clauses, which we'll look at here in just a moment, give us the ability to hold those modular chunks of language. In addition to that, it allows us to hold options for that language. And when we're building a form, we can determine whether we want to provide users with the ability to select from amongst the options of these clauses, as well as giving them the option to understand whether the text is included here in the form itself and any notes here that may guide the user as to when and where it would be appropriate to use different versions. Forms can also include things like the ability to upload supplemental documents or details that might affect the routing. And so this form is a really vital way to initiate a process. It allows us to collect all of our details from our end users. And there are times when the responses from our end users can actually affect the form itself. So you'll see that we can include information like conditions, which will allow us to use responses from users, like um, whether we have worked for this customer before, to determine which questions we're showing there. So it really gives us a way to guide the experience for our initiators. Now, this form gives us that opportunity to collect all the information that we need. And it's also going to be an important piece of generating the document because the details that are put input here around the contact information or the loan amount in this example, will wa we'll want that information to flow into our final document. And that's where this series of merge tags that are created comes in handy. 
before we're done, we'll look at the Word document that serves as the template for our agreements. And we'll see inside that template where we'll have placed the tags that are created here by the form. So in order to initiate a process, we're gonna to need to guide our users through this experience with the form. And as administrators, we have the ability to select from a number of different field types. We're able to add them to this form. We're able to drag them around and reorder them within this form. And as we add them to the form, it's automatically creating tags that we can paste into our templates where we want the dynamic information to appear. Let's look at clauses next. Those of you familiar with DocuSign CLM know that it provides a full feature document repository that allows users to organize content. In addition to organize, we're also able to secure content. So we often see that our customers have uh, specific locations inside the repository secured to ensure that, for example, just the legal folks with the proper permissions have access to manage and edit the clauses and templates. If you know about our repository, you'll also know that we provide full features around version control. Um, and the same things apply to the clauses and templates that we're looking at here. Not only is there a detailed audit trail over the changes that are made, but we can even support workflow processes to control the approvals around these items. But when it comes to document generation, there are two items stored inside that central repository that are vital. And those are clauses and templates. So let's take a look. We'll start with clauses. As I mentioned earlier, clauses provide us a modular way to store language. And as you see here, um, this limitation of liability clause provides two options that can be included for this particular piece of language inside of an agreements. Now, we have our standard language that's controlled here. We also have the ability to add notes, which can be put in place as guidance for users when they're accessing those forms to understand what the ramifications of selecting either our standard language or our fallback language are. Because we can use the choices by users from that form to not only guide which of these uh, options are appear inside of uh, the document itself, but also to drive the process. And the option notes give us a place to let them know what to expect if they were to select the first fallback in this instance over the standard language. Editing these clauses is simple. We can make changes and add additional text here. And saving those changes to the repository makes this language now available the next time a user goes to create a document. Now, the next piece of document generation is the templates themselves. Again, typically housed and organized within a secure location available only to the appropriate administrators. Templates managed in Word control the layout and all of the standard consistent information that appears across every single document. And they also include tags copied from that form we created earlier in places where dynamic information needs to be injected into the document from the inputs that were provided by the user at the beginning. So we can see here, this commercial loan agreement contains text in black here that is standard and stock for every document that's gonna be created from this template. But it also includes some text, which I've just highlighted in blue to draw your eyes to it here, that indicate where those tags have been inserted into this document in order to place dynamic information. Users can edit these documents pretty easily through connections uh, with either desktop, Microsoft Office, or Office Online in order to make changes to the static text or add new tags to the document. And as I mentioned earlier, there's tight version control over all of this so that when my changes are completed, I can simply close this window and a new version of the document will appear here in the repository. Again, as soon as a new version has been saved in this location, then the next time someone clicks that button to initiate a process and fill in that form, it's gonna take advantage of the latest and greatest link. So all the elements we've discussed come together in a document generation configuration. This is where we define what happens when a user goes to an action and pushes a button like this one that says draft agreement. It's leading them to three different templates to choose from because we've created a configuration that provides visibility into three different templates. Behind each of these items here 
you'll see that there is a configuration that allows us to select the form from amongst the forms that we have configured inside this account and to select the document template. And that ties together those two pieces that we've built. In addition to connecting the dots between the forms and the templates that they're feeding information into, the document generation also gives us the ability to select from workflows that we've defined. We'll talk about workflows in a separate video moving forward. It also allows us to define where the documents, once they've been created, are gonna land inside the repository. This folder location, in addition to the workflow that we configure, will help us organize the agreements that are created from these templates so that we know that they're stored in the right spot. So those are the pieces that go into generating a document using DocuSign CLM. We've talked about the form, which collects inputs from the user in order to drive the process. We've also talked about clauses and templates and how they allow us to control the language, the layout, on the final presentation of the agreements that we're generating. Now, this was just intended to be an overview and we have tons more information that's available in the links below around um, document generation, around more advanced merge tags so that we can look at doing things like conditionally adding content into our documents, um, around connections to platforms like Salesforce, how we can connect to data sources directly through that form and beyond that, uh, how we can add additional uh, conditions and filters to the form to make the experience even more guided and dynamic for our users. Hope you enjoyed this content. Until next time, this has been Paul. Thanks for your time.